Hello podcasters, since you have clicked on this video, I can safely assume that you own an audio interface, for instance like this one, which is the trusty Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, second gen. Let me show you how you can expand its capabilities with a Bluetooth input and software loopback. In fact, it will apply to any other second gen Scarlett interface too. As a cream on top, we'll talk about the potentially upcoming fourth generation Focusrite interfaces towards the end, so make sure to stick around for that. It may impact your purchasing decision if you are in the market for a new audio interface. The Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 is a great little interface which does what it promises to be able to do, but other than converting your analog audio signal into digital, it does not have too many bells and whistles. Neither the second gen nor the third gen versions, by the way. Starting from the 4i4 is where it gets interesting. The third gen Scarlett interfaces from the 4i4 upwards do add software loopback, or USB loopback, which no other interface from the second gen range does, and neither do the third gen Solo and 2i2 by the way. Having said that, even the higher end third gen Scarlett interfaces don't yet have a Bluetooth input. To be fair, the third gen interfaces did get the air feature trickle down, which adds, well, air so clarity to your recordings and they have a wider gain range too the good news is that you can retrofit your relatively aging audio interface with both a bluetooth input or a usb loopback let's admit it nobody's really crazy about upgrading an audio interface if it works it works for years and bobs your uncle no need to fix it unless you are feeling limited by not having usb loopback to record sounds from your computer or Bluetooth input as you are using like a soundpad or soundboard app on your phone to trigger those inevitable podcast jingles. The challenge is that apart from some dedicated podcasting consoles like the Tascam Mixcast 4 and the Rode Roadcaster Pro, very few audio interfaces have built-in Bluetooth input. Some rare audio mixers do include it, like the Mackie Onyx series of mixers, the Presonus Studio Live AR series, the Tascam Model 12 and its bigger brothers, and the pretty amazing little Behringer Flow 8, which is the only one in roughly the price range of a Scarlett interface. And while USB software loopback is a little more common, mostly thanks to Focusrite Scarlett's third generation from the 4i4 upwards, it is still not a natural feature either. So if you don't want to throw away your trusty old interface to invest in a newer one, but still want to add the Bluetooth input or USB loopback, I've just found this device, the Cyrus DI Bluetooth USB Stereo Converter, which costs a little less than 70 euros or US dollars, and it is a 24-bit 96 kHz USB Bluetooth signal converter to analog mic output which you can happily plug into one of your audio interface inputs and voila, you have your dedicated Bluetooth or USB loopback channel. What's cool about it is that it is a DI box at the same time. You may have seen me praising DI boxes in my previous video where I was using one to supercharge the Zoom Portrack P4. If you haven't seen it, check it out right after you have subscribed and finished watching this video. All you need to do is to charge the box via USB-C and screw in the Bluetooth antenna. To pair it with your Bluetooth device, press the Bluetooth power button and search for Cyrus in the Bluetooth menu. A USB is easier, you just need to plug it into the USB-C input. And here you go, let me just quickly play a video on my phone and you'll see as it is getting sent through the Scarlett 2i2 into GarageBand. We our users on their website Hello podcasters, today we are going to supercharge this guy. But why does it need to be supercharged in the first place? Because we all know this is a very capable device. Now note that while you can set the volume of the Bluetooth source and the USB source separately, the output will combine both sources. You can select if you want the stereo output, in which case you will need to have two XLR cables, one for the left and one for the right channel. Thus, you will occupy two inputs on your interface too, or you can choose to output the mono sound signal, which is what I like to use, as then I only have one cable and take only one XLR input on the interface. And yes, the reason I said it can be a USB loopback is that it also works with the same computer that you have your audio interface connected to. You just need to connect the computer to both the audio interface and from a second USB port to the Cyrus converter and set the Cyrus as the computer's audio output in the sound preferences 
while in your DAW of choice, you'll set the audio interface as an input. And there you go. You can start recording the system sounds into your DAW through your audio interface right away. Again, I'll quickly start a video, as you'll see as the sound of it makes it through the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 and into GarageBand Record to Report. Which is, by the way, running on the same MacBook to which the Scarlett is connected to. Hence, software loopback. And yes, it works on Windows too. <laughs> Important to know that not only will the box combine the USB and the Bluetooth inputs, this also will be strictly inputs and not a two-way signal path. So with that, you can only send an input into your audio interface, but it won't send any signal back to your source, i.e. your phone or to your computer. Remember, it's a signal converter and not an interface. What it means that you cannot use it to create mix minus setups. For that, I have more videos on the channel, by the way. So you won't turn your Scarlet interface into a Rodecaster Pro with this, but what it can do, it can do well. Let's see if Focusrite adds these options natively in their upcoming 4th generation Scarlet range. And by the way, if the lovely people from Focusrite happen to watch this video, probably the easiest upgrade in the 4th gen Scarlet range would be to add Bluetooth with Auto Mix Minus and add USB Mix Minus option in Focusrite control for the software loopback. This would make the Scarlet range an absolute no-brainer for podcasters and easily compete with the likes of the Rodecaster Pro, the Zoom Podtrax or the Tascam Mixcast 4, provided that you keep the competitive pricing too. I hope you found this video useful. This channel is, by the way, full of podcast recording tips and tricks. Have a look and thanks for watching. Cheers!